What is up my friends? My name is Kim and if you like true crime like I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I post two times a week and you don't want to miss a thing. But I do have an announcement before I get started on today's video. On Saturdays, I'm going to start doing my video's premiere so then we can start a chat. We can watch it together and start a chat. So if you guys are interested, that's going to be every Saturday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you guys are interested, please come join me. I hope that you do so we can talk live on uh, the cases. I hope you guys are having a fabulous day so far. So today's video is a brand new case. And this case will just make you upset, mad, frustrated. You're going to want answers like I do. Just when I think I've heard it all, I ran across this case. This involves children. Brittany Gosney's children. Brittany's boyfriend, James Hamilton, didn't want the children anymore. So this is the information as of April 13th. New information will come out or will be corrected as we go along. So just keep that in mind. This case is developing. I'll do an update video after the trial, but this is the information as of today, April 13. 29-year-old Brittany Gosney lived in Middletown, Ohio with her three kids and her boyfriend, James Hamilton. Brittany had a fourth child, but the child allegedly was removed from the home. I don't have any details around the fourth child, what happened, anything like that, but I believe once the case develops more, that information will be more available. So we just have to wait and see. James Hamilton was Brittany's boyfriend. He was a 49-year-old man who apparently had a felony, but it was back in 2007. James Hamilton was employed for seven years as some sort of electrician, according to his lawyer, Jeremy Evans. Brittany had three kids. James, who is six years old, who is the center of this case. He was a first grader at Rosa Parks Elementary. I'll play a clip from his school. He would come running towards the front doors of the school building with a giant smile on his face. And he gave the biggest, and as they said, the bestest hugs you've ever imagined. Um, that was James on a daily basis. You know, oftentimes in education, we have incentives to reward students for making their, making their dreams come true and reaching their goals. Uh, one recent uh, uh, incentive at Rosa Parks Elementary, we found James in the cafeteria with a big smile on his face because he was rewarded with the lucky lunch tray. And that was important to him. And the staff just shared how joyful he was. He sounds like an amazing, amazing kid who had just a horrible home life, but enjoyed the escape by going to school. He loved his teachers and was trying just to make the best with what he had. I've seen zero, no reports that this kid was troubled, that he was an angry child, that he was out of control, rather just the opposite. He was sweet and he loved giving hugs. Also in the home, there was one other son and one other daughter. Their ages are seven and nine. Allegedly, Gosney stated she was under pressure from her boyfriend, James Hamilton. Through this video, I'm going to call him Hamilton. So if you hear Hamilton, that's the boyfriend. He was applying pressure to Brittany to get rid of his kids. Brittany went to her sister, allegedly, to try to get her to take the kids, but her sister just wasn't able to. So on February 26th, allegedly Brittany and Hamilton hogtied and gagged the children. They both knew that this was only a temporary fix, so Brittany and James came up with a bigger plan to drive the three children to a parking lot of a state park called Rush Run Wildlife Area, where they had previously fished with the children, and their plan was to ditch them in the parking lot. Yes, their plan was to drop them off in the middle of the night at the state park that's approximately an hour away from their home. 
they wanted to wash their hands of the children. So Brittany loaded up her three children and made this hour trip. She made the trip to the Wildlife State Park at 3 a.m. in the morning on February 27th, which was a Saturday. She got to the parking lot and unloaded her three children, ages six, seven, and nine, out of the car in efforts to leave them there in the parking lot. While the children are outside of the car, Brittany jumps in her minivan and floors the gas. While scared and not wanting to be left in the parking lot, James chased after the van and held on to the car handle, and it is believed he was drugged down the road and possibly ran over. Did Brittany stop? No, Brittany kept on driving. I have no words, but in some strike of emotion, or she just wanted to cover it up, it's unclear, she returns 30 to 40 minutes later. When she returns, she found poor James dead. So she loads his body plus the other two children back into the van and she returns back to her home on Crawford Street in Middletown, Ohio. Then Brittany and Hamilton put James' lifeless body in a spare room under a window at their home. I'm not sure why under the window is how it's being reported. Do they mean that he was on the floor under a window? I'm not sure, I didn't see any pictures of the home, but I, maybe they're indicating that he was under a window in efforts to hide him so nobody could see into the house to see him. I don't know, the wording's just weird, but anyways, so Brittany and Hamilton made another plan. I mean, these are geniuses. So they made another plan to get rid of James. So at 3 a.m., 3 a.m. is apparently the time on February 28th, the following day. So James had spent the night in their home. They drove down Interstate 275 in the van to Lawrenceburg, Indiana area. They found a boat launch, tied a cement block to little James, and threw his body into the Ohio River. Brittany and Hamilton then go to the police station to report that James had gone missing. Brittany and Hamilton's story was not making any sense and their stories just were not lining up. So with pressure mounting inside Brittany, she then cracked and told them what had happened. She just gave all the details and then some of what had happened. Middletown police have charged six-year-old James's mother, Brittany Godsey, with murder and other crimes. Godsey's boyfriend, James Hamilton, also facing charges. According to investigative documents from the Preble County Sheriff's Office, Godsey this weekend admitted she had killed Hutchinson, her son, because her boyfriend wanted to get rid of the kids. According to the records, Godsey admitted driving the children before dawn Saturday to Rush Run Wildlife Area in Preble County, where she planned to get the kids out of the vehicle and to leave them behind, but told police when she did, James grabbed onto the door handle, so Godsey slammed the gas trying to leave the kids and dragged him, possibly running him over. Police say Godsey turned around and went back to check on James and she said he was dead. The police, of course, want to find the body of James, so they drove Brittany to the boat launch of where she claimed they threw James into the water. This whole time, Brittany is not upset either. It has been reported that she is showing little to no remorse. Disgusting. They still have not been able to locate his body. The search for James just started, but is now paused because of the rising levels in the Ohio River. But it's frustrating because, you know, you think that um, if not as much time goes by, you'll find the person, you have a better indication of where the person may be. The river is expected to reach 54 feet by Thursday. If you had a boat out in this type of weather uh, with the water, um, it could be hard to control the boat. Um, also, sometimes the water may look calm on top, but underneath it's anything but. Incident Commander Jeff Cherie with North Star International Search and Rescue knows the dangers. Uh, items are moving by us so quickly, logs and large debris, that it's it's hard to see what it, we're even looking for. I don't want to be in any waterways at this point. Uh, when the water rises rapidly after a long winter, it's going to pick up all sorts of debris that are on the riverbanks. So as you can see, the water is kind of churning a little bit, lots of items. It's becoming heart-wrenching. The team and other volunteers have searched close to 200 miles along the river. 
but as soon as the water levels go down, they will pick up again and search again. The police then got a search warrant for their home. They removed the hard drive from a video camera at the residence along with tape and rope. I'm concerned about the video camera. The reportings on the tape and rope are not clear. It stated it was hidden in a different location. I have a million questions on what that means. I'm, it just, I don't know what that means, but I guess we'll find out more. This case is so new. So Brittany and Hamilton go to court to make their plea. They both pled not guilty, Brittany claiming the plea of not guilty by reason of an insanity. No, you don't get off that easy, Brittany. Well, I mean, she may. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So she goes in front of the judge for the first time. The judge asks, do you want a court-appointed lawyer, ma'am? Brittany answers, I don't understand. I have a learning disability, so I don't understand what you're saying. Here's the clip from that. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney and if you qualify financially at your request, the court will appoint one for you and you would talk to that lawyer today. Do you like court-appointed counsel, ma'am? I don't understand. You want to talk to a lawyer? Where's Officer Hoover? Well, he's not in here right now. What about a Well, lawyer? I have a learning disability, so I'm not understanding what you're saying. The court's going to go ahead and appoint to counsel. So Chief David Burke from the Middleton Police Department at a press conference stated, we're very confident she understands the court procedures and understands her actions. She knows right from wrong. I have to say that understanding right and wrong is very different from understanding court procedures. Brittany doesn't have a criminal past, so it isn't surprising she was confused about court procedures. She just needs a lawyer to explain it to her. I don't think that she's doing this intentional. You can kind of see and hear the panic in her voice as she speaks. I do think she knows right from wrong, though. If you take those two comments separately, I do think she knows right from wrong. She did too much to hide evidence to not know what, what she was doing was right, in my opinion. She is facing charges of murder, involuntary manslaughter, and multiple counts of endangering children, gross abuse of a corpse, kidnapping, and abduction. Hamilton was also indicted for kidnapping, abduction, endangering children, tampering with evidence, and gross abuse of a corpse. Gosney's defense has entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity, and the judge ordered a competency evaluation to determine whether she is capable of assisting in her own defense. The judge set a hearing date for April 26th in her case. James Hamilton also in his case, uh, he had his hearing April 12th, so he said that he wanted to waive his right to a speedy trial. His attorney said multiple motions will be filed soon. Both Brittany and Hamilton were arraigned in the Butler County Common Pleas Court. They were assigned court-appointed attorneys. They pled not guilty, and they were in front of Judge Noel Powers. The bond for Brittany is $2 million and $750,000 for Hamilton. So they're going to stay in jail. They are in jail. Like I mentioned, um, James waived his right for a speedy trial, but Brittany did not waive that right to date, as far as I know. I believe that James did this because Brittany is going to, or Brittany is claiming the insanity plea. And so, of course, that's going to take a longer time to establish if this is true or not. So tentatively right now, a trial date is set for May 24th. It is not yet determined if Gosney and Hamilton will be tried together. I want to say I doubt it, but we'll just have to see what happens. So you guys, this case is a lot. It's just a lot to digest. First, I want to start 
with Brittany taking them to, this is just my opinion, Brittany taking them to the Rush Run Wildlife State Park as just a separate thing. Let's talk about that. I have no idea what she was thinking about leaving the kids at the state park. I have two theories for this. If I were giving Brittany the benefit of the doubt, let's just say she is in a heartless piece of shit just for a moment, okay? Let's say her boyfriend had hogtied them and was gagging her children, and she just wanted it to stop. So she decided, I'm just going to drop them off at the state park and just leave them for her kids' benefit, to protect them, to stop the torture, to stop the crying, and to get them away from Hamilton. The police report stated they were hogtied and gagged to torturize and or inflict serious harm. That's really, really bad. It's just awful. I question this because she had no remorse as what's being said about her. So I wanna believe this. I wanna believe she has an ounce of humanity in her because dropping her, them off at a state park just doesn't make any sense at all. She must have thought it would be a low chance that by doing this, she could get rid of them. They could, I mean, these children could walk and talk. They were six, seven, and nine years old. They could easily run into someone to help them, go to a house. There was a campground on the property, so the children could stay there for a couple hours until traffic came through in the morning. She didn't drop them off in the middle of the forest. She dropped them off in a parking lot. It just doesn't add up, in my opinion. Even the most unsmart criminal wouldn't think this was a good plan. And not to mention, it was two minds working together that came up with this plan, her and Hamilton. Hamilton had held down a job for seven years. I would think he would have some kind of common sense, some kind of common sense to know that this plan is not foolproof. I'm just having a hard time with this story. So my second theory is she really wanted to get rid of her kids and her and Hamilton didn't have the mental capacity to think the plan through. She was hoping that she would drop the kids off and they would be taken by wildlife or picked up by an ill-intentioned person or at minimum the children would find someone to help them and was banking on the fact that CPS would get involved and they would take the kids from her and then the problem would be solved. As I mentioned, I'm having a hard time with this theory, but this is what she's claiming. So if I'm only going off of what she's saying, I just, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. But either way, allegedly, she wasn't expecting to run over James. But honestly, we don't even know at this time that this is really what actually happened. I've seen it reported that Brittany and Hamilton's stories are not lining up. So it may come out later that he was hurt another way. But this is the story she came up with. So I don't know. It's all very strange. It's a very strange cover-up story if... It's true. If it isn't true, how did she come up with this ridiculous... I don't... It just doesn't make sense. I keep asking why she turned around. So now she's ran him over and she turns around about 30 to 40 minutes later. I don't know why she turned around. I don't know if she turned around because she felt bad or she wanted to cover it up. And she didn't turn around right away. I would be more inclined that she was worried and felt bad if she turned around sooner, but she didn't. The fact she drove for a while before turning around is mind-blowing, not only for him, but leaving her other two children behind with their lifeless brother. There is not enough counseling in the world to get past that kind of trauma. How? How could she leave her two other kids just to sit with them? And then bringing him, him back to the house and making a plan to drop him in the Ohio River with a cement block, 
I don't really think she had good intentions from her actions after the accidental death. And honestly, I question everything Brittany and Hamilton are saying at this point. Once the body is found and they get the real cause of death to support what she is saying, I would be more inclined to believe it. But the story as it, as it stands today just makes no sense. There is one thing that I am confident in, and that is Hamilton was the ringleader. Brittany is not the mother of the year as it is. We know that she's already had one kid removed from the home. So, so when Hamilton came to her and was her, in her ear that the kids had to go, she agreed maybe unwillingly at first, but then got on board at some point. I think he wanted to keep his hands clean, so he was directing Brittany on what to do. He could have killed him, and the state park story is just a load of BS to get him off the hook. He tells her, I already have a felony, so she needs to take the blame for him. But that's just my theory. This is an awful case, you guys. No matter what theory it is, it's a senseless crime. James's dad said all she needed to do was drop him off. He wanted him. All she had to do is give him to me. She could have dropped him off at my sister's house. Like, that's a, I don't understand like, how somebody, what would drive somebody to be a monster like that? Apparently, they had fought over him in court. I don't know if the dad was a good guy or not. I mean, birds of a feather flock together a lot of the time. But honestly, I don't think she really cared about that. So why didn't she just drop him off there? That's what's not making sense. The only explanation is I think maybe it was a pride thing. She didn't fight over James and win just to go and drop him off. I, I don't know. If there's any good that came from this case, it is the other children are safe and is in protective services at this time. I'm hoping they are placed in a good home. They deserve nothing but the best going forward. This is a tragedy they lived through and witnessed. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions. I have so many questions. Nothing makes sense. I think I've said that like, I don't know, 45 million times through this video, but it just doesn't. I, I don't get it. And because it's so new, we don't have all the information and that doesn't help with our speculation, my speculation. But if you guys have made it this far, you guys are rock stars and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my Captured Killers playlist if you want to check them out. But either way, stay safe, my loves, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.